how do you feel about like the whole Les Paul game? Like, I know you played some fifty nines, right? Uh, I played a fifty nine, and it was um, it was actually Joe's. Yeah. So yeah, it was Joe Bonamassa's. It was really nice, but he has his guitar set up different to how I do, so it was a bit weird playing something yeah. different. But I mean, yeah. AKA Mr. Shred with Masters of Shred, and we have a very special new episode of Talking Shred with a guest that has never been on our show. And this guest, he may look a little bit familiar to you. He was featured on the Ellen DeGeneres show back in 2019, blowing people's minds, and he was on Australia's Got Talent as well. But these days, you can catch him melting faces at venues across America. Give it up for the Blues Shred Prodigy. The mighty Taj Ferrant. Oh. Hell yeah. There it is, folks. You know what I'm talking about here? So, Taj, thank you for coming out, letting us come out to you. We're on the bus. This incredible shred setup you got in here. It's amazing. We're going to talk some gear, talk yeah. about the tour. How is, how's tour life treating you? Um, it's been pretty good. Um, just been on the road for about five to six months now, um, like consecutive now, and then we've just been getting ready to move over here properly as well. So yeah, it's all been kind of falling into the places we need it to. Right, and you guys are coming from Australia, and now you're permanently going to be in the states, right? Yeah, we're going to be in the states permanently for well forever now, pretty much. So uh, yeah. So traveling against, you know, across all these states, is there any state in particular that's, you know, you kind of grown an attachment to? Um, there's a couple, and, like, a lot of them are close to, like, Australia, like Florida and, like, Texas and stuff, but heat-wise, it's funny, I come from the place where there's a lot of heat, but I like the cold more. But, yeah, um, so, I mean, we I like Missouri, so that's kind of where we looking at at the moment so yeah there's a lot of places i love missouri that's pretty good yeah we're we're as you guys may may not know we're in nashville right now and you're going to play the city winery tomorrow night yeah um downtown nashville and you're going to play also the city winery in chicago yep so you can be heading up there as well so definitely we urge you to catch those shows you can probably find all the tour dates on your website too yeah, right yeah, which on website. websites uh, uh and let's, let's let's talk about that a little bit because we all know you're an incredible guitar player right you're a, you're you're a, legit prodigy Thanks. and these terms they get thrown around but not often because you don't come across prodigies right but you've probably gotten a lot of comparisons to joe bonamassa right in the yeah. sense that he started out very very young too yeah. and he had that intensity tone and feel that a lot of players don't have at that age let me ask some are you aware of it um i mean i've been playing for a long not long time but i've been playing for over half my life now. Um, so, I mean, it's very natural for me, at least now, that I get to play how I get to play. Right. So, I mean, it feels normal for me, at least. feels normal. So, you don't realize that you hone these skills that majority of players do not have at your age. Yeah. You know, has that ever, like, come across your mind or you're just going with it and it's coming naturally so you don't, you know, it is what it is. I'm playing. I'm just doing it. Yeah, I mean, right. a lot of practice went into like how I got to where I am now. But I mean, it did, I feel, come quicker than most people picked it up. Here's something funny. I posted a video way back of Joe Bonamassa on the Mickey Mouse Club, but they were asking him, um, why do you, a really funny question. And I actually talked to your dad about this. It's pretty crazy. I thought it was funny. I laughed when I saw it. Why do you play the blues? You don't seem sad. Well, you're only 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Do people ask you a lot about how you play the blues? Because you're obviously not a sad person. So just just to mimic that yeah. ridiculous statement, I have to ask you the same thing. Um, well, I feel when you're playing a lot of other music, there's not much you can do with emotion-wise. But with like the blues, it can be still pretty rocky or it can be stripped back to pretty much nothing and it's just guitar and drums but i mean that's what i liked about it the most it was the most 
um, versatility in a music genre, right? You have a, you have a strong range there. Yeah, and you can hear it too in your, in your playing because I see you throwing in these insane, really tasty licks that could fall almost in the category of like Paul Gilbert esque. Yeah, that's kind of what I liked about the blues. You can put anything in it, and as long as you know what you want it to sound like, it'll sound good. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on recently. So you have a new single coming out. Yep. Two by two, May 24th, right? Yep. May 24th is so when it comes out. An idea. Give us kind of a, uh, um, a teaser of what we can come to expect, what sort of emotions behind it. Tell us about that. Um, so a lot of it, it's in this album, um, I think most of this album is like a bit of everything and the song and the album is supposed to be tipping my hat to everyone I kind of respect. So it's like, it goes from like almost like reggae to like blues to like um, rock and stuff. So there's like every genre in that album, but it all kind of sticks to the blues category. Right. But yeah. And this is going to be your debut album coming up here yep. this year, right? Yeah, yeah. You've already had four number one singles. Yeah. So I heard there's some whispering there that you could possibly be up for a Grammy nomination. Um, yeah, you never know. It's a, it's a, um, it'll be cool. I'd be one of the youngest to get a Grammy nomination, so yeah. Right, 14 years old. So we keep our fingers crossed for that one. There's no doubt about it. Now, you brought up Missouri a little bit and why you, you know, you may settle down there. I heard that you are not, outside of being a great, phenomenal guitar player, you're quite an entrepreneur at your age, right? So tell me a little bit more about something I heard about Blues Bar. So, yeah, um, we bought a bar um, there, and it's called The Riff. Oh, so, that's a killer name. Yeah, um, so it kind of fell into place, and that venue, so the original owner, um, he was the first person to ever take us to put us on an actual show, um, like one of the first persons to ever take us on a show who actually like trusted a 12 year old at the time to play at their venue. So it was like, um, we kind of stuck to the places that actually gave me a shot. And then um, it kind of fell into, oh, I like this place, we could like just make it our own. And then that's how it all kind of fell into places there, so yeah. All right, so let's talk about something else, since we're talking about a little bit about Richard Fortas being out there, about Slash, because Slash is his fellow guitar player in Guns N' Roses right now. Slash just announced he's going to be kicking off a blues festival tour, the Serpent Festival. Yeah, I and was about that. I was, yeah, I, I, I was looking at the, the roster. you got some great players on that thing. Kingfish is going to be there. Uh, I believe Eric Gales is going to be there. Yep. It's going to be phenomenal. Where the heck is Taj on that thing? Hey, I mean, you never know. We might get the call and be like, hey, you want to play? I'll be like, yeah, yeah, sure. But, I mean, it's all up to it's all up to you. <laughs> the man in the top hat, right? So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll put that feeler out there then, right? So, Slash, if you're checking this out, maybe we got to get Taj on that roster too and uh, make it a party, right? So an another thing that I want to talk to you about is... You have a massive guitar collection. Like, whereas most people, you know, in their 20s and their 30s, they may brag about having 30, 35 guitars. Tell us what number of guitars you have. I have 97 guitars. 97? Yeah. Man. How do you manage all those? At my nan's house uh, in gun safes. Well, the good ones are in gun safes. The rest of them are kind of just sitting there in their cases, but yeah. Wow, and I heard that when you go on tour, a lot of these guitars are actually sometimes given to you from fans. They'll give you some incredible finds, right? Yeah, um, I've been lucky enough to be gifted quite a lot of um, some pretty cool guitars. So, I mean, yeah, it's got to... A lot of people give me the guitars, and then I'm like, oh, we now um, have 98. But, I mean, we have to, like... At this point, I'm going to have to start at least selling a couple of them, but not like the ones people give me because I don't like selling people stuff that they give me. But, I mean, um, we, my nan's house is just filled with my guitars. So he's, she's like, come on, man, you need to get rid of some of them. I don't have any room. I'm right. like, all right. 
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this interview. Just a quick reminder, make sure to mark your calendars for June 5th in Brentwood, Tennessee at Lane Music, where we will be hosting a live in-person Talking Shred episode and masterclass with the mighty Phil X, the session assassin, the lead guitarist of Bon Jovi. Make sure to visit mastersofshred.com where you can get more ticket info, reserve your tickets, and I do urge you to reserve them now because they are going quick. And now back to your regular scheduled programming. So what 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 to you are like some of the most favorite guitars people have given you that really stand out? You're like, oh man, you're not gonna believe this one I got. What's some of your favorite? Um, uh, one of my, I mean, probably one of my favorite guitars. I have a '64 SG, and it's um, it's pretty cool. It's a nice, it's like just really perfect sounding. You know what I mean? And then I have a um, guitar that Santana gave me. It was a um. You know, like the Les Paul Jr.? Yeah. Yeah, he gave me one of them, uh, but the PRS version is really nice. And it's just one volume, one wow. um, pickup. So it's really simple, but it sounds good. And, um, I mean, this is one of my favorites. And then my gold top as well. Wow, and this one is kind of like a um, mix parts of different caster. guitars, right? It's yeah. parts caster. So the body, you tell like a what, 70? Uh, it's one? a 70 something. It's in the 70s, and then this is also an 80s neck and then um these pickups were made by my guitar teacher at the time and then it was like an ebay pick guard and the rest of it is ebay as well that's but it just sounds really good for having like cheap parts so it was like that's what i liked about it the most got a hell of a lot of character too yeah yeah it's really cool he's definitely seeing that being a, a signature fender Tyler stratocaster right there um, now, aside of just taking guitars, right, in and giving them a great home and people will give you their guitars, you also give back too, right? Yeah, I think now I've given probably just over like 30 guitars, I think I've given to like, um, like causes and like other people that have, um, come to shows and that. So, I mean, it's all, it's all cool to get, but it's cool to give as well. Wow, oh, that's yeah. pretty impressive. You don't see many 14-year-olds looking to do that. Look, you just say, take as much as they can get in, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it all comes down to the person, but I mean, yeah, I just like giving out what I get given as well, so yeah. And I think you actually string them all up yourself with yeah. el your Man. elixirs, right? Yep, elixir. I use elixir. Me and Dad, um, it's funny, we tested like every string brand like that we could find. And once again, like, Alexa just was not failing. And I was like, all right, well, there we go. Yeah, that's great. Well, the, uh, li those elixirs are amazing. They feel like glass, especially the polywebs. And they just make playing even more effortless, you know? Yeah. So it's uh, something really special about those strings. Um, something crazy, too, I want to ask you about. You know, you, you kind of broke through into this mainstream culture right now really stemming from the end of the uh the ellen show right a little bit early on yeah how was your experience on that because you know she's got a little bit of slack over the years and you were there during that time where there was some debate on the employees and stuff how they were treated what was your experience like with ellen she now? was really nice and i mean like when you run a company that's that massive you're sure to have a couple bad days but i mean i, I think people just got to in the wrong sense, you know what I mean? But I mean, it was really cool. She was really nice to um, me and my family, so it's, uh, no harm, no foul there. Nothing. I heard she, she uh, set you guys up nice and went took all the Disney stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, right. She um, uh, paid for us to go to Disneyland and stuff, so that was really cool. And um, Giselle had a blast there, so yeah. That's awesome, dude. All right, so now we're gonna do a really fun segment I think you're gonna like. It is called Shred Says. Kind of like Simon says, but that's what I say, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say it, and Tosh, it's going to be your job to play it. All you right. think you're up for it? Yeah, we'll give it a crack. All right, here we go. Shred says, play some Led Zeppelin. Yeah, that's oh well, you nailed it there. Okay, all right. Shred says play some Metallica. Oh, there's so many just coming to mind. Um Alright. Shred says play some Gary Moore. 
I don't even know. Um, it's the funny thing is, most of it's just like the solo. The Parisian walkways is good, so yeah. That's a good one too. Okay, Shreds has played some Van Halen. The best one. Touche. Yeah. Shreds has played some Taj. I don't even know that guy. Um. <laughs> It's hard to think of a riff. That's my favorite riff at least. I dig uh, it. Very cool, dude. Yeah. Here's the thing for you. I heard you're not much of a gear snob. You are open to all sorts of guitars and brands, right? Yeah. So you're playing your parts caster strat here. Yep. But you also have a really badass gold top Kiesel that you yes. play too, right? Uh, yeah, this is my main. This is my main guitar, at least. Look at this thing, man. But yeah, this is the main guitar of my choice. So tell us about this guitar. Um, so this is um, a guitar that uh, Jeff made for me, and um, it's just really nice. It's like. Fits perfectly, I mean, for me at least. And it's better. Um, what, and so, yeah. how about the pickups on here? What do you got in those? Days? So I have uh, P90s in this, um, but they're wound very hot, so they sound like a single coil, but it's got the punch of like a humbucker, so it's really versatile in between them. And um, the cool thing is when I go on these pickups, it sounds like a strat and it's really like twangy and it's like. But I mean, it's cool. That's pretty, and, and are those Kiesel P90s or Seymour Duncan? Uh, these are Seymour Duncan P90s. Um, they're really, really uh, pretty special P90s, but uh, yeah. And could you see this possibly becoming like a signature Taj Fair um, guitar? If I, chose any of the ones that we've gone through, it'll be this one. Wow, that's a, that, and it has some great weight to it and a great feel. And the frets yeah. are like glass. Yeah, and, the, and it's not like heaps heavy for a Les Paul like right. most of them are. Because we were talking about that earlier. So many guitars, you can get like a really nice guitar for three or four thousand dollars and you'll be shocked to find really some, rough frets. Yeah. Gnarly frets, you're yeah. thinking that's... Mean. That's one thing I loved about Kiesel is that the necks were pretty much perfect, like straight from the factory. But I mean, um, yeah, I just like They kind of like play themselves, right? They're they kind of play themselves, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you. And how do you feel about like the whole Les Paul game? Like I know you played some 59s, right? Uh, I've played A59 and it was, um, it was actually Joe's. Yeah? So yeah, it was Joe Bonamassa's, it was really nice. But he has his guitars set up different to how I do, so it was a bit weird playing something yeah. different. But I mean, yeah. So, so what's your preference when it comes to a vintage Les Paul? What really, you know, makes you tick when you say, "Oh my God, this is great. This is this is me." What is it? Aspects of that, qualities. Um, most of it for me is how the volume winds, because I uh, with this it's very, it's. It's a 10, it goes to 10, but a 10 sounds like a 10 and a 5 sounds like a 5. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it breaks up and it cleans it down. Even if I was like on full ball, if I bring it to 3, it would sound clean. Right. So it's very versatile. That's what I look for with guitars. You could have a $20 million guitar, but if it doesn't clean up, I probably wouldn't play it. Wow, yeah, that's, and I heard that you also like the next kind of roughed and aged and kind of yeah, like that I mean, naturally, right? Yeah, I don't Over time. care for the glossy, and I don't care for if it gets scratched, but um, it's um, pretty good at the moment. That's good. Okay, well, I brought a guitar for you to check out. Okay, yeah. now you've played a lot of Gibson Les Pauls. You've played a 59. You played Joe's 59, all right? Yeah. 
So this one's got a little bit more of a weirder story, though, I think, that you may uh, either like or be slightly terrified from, okay? Um, so this guitar actually owned to, belonged to a player uh, in Central Florida, and he passed away on stage playing it. That's so some will say, and then as the story goes, a serial number disappeared when he played his last note, because you won't find a serial number on this guitar. It kind of faded away off the neck, um, but it's got some mode. Yeah. All right, here we go. So we get that on camera here. All right. Here we go. All right. The guys is the best part. Is that A and J pickups? Oh. Uh oh. We have a problem. <laughs> no. It might be, yes. But I think there's a good reason. Oh, that's a heavy Check toy. out the back of the neck though, right? Yeah. That's all oh, natural. That's, a flame that's maple. not yeah, three piece flame maple. That's cool, actually. So you don't see that a lot, and that's all natural aging of just blood, sweat, and tears at a bunch yeah. of different places. You see, I had to put like a Kaler trim here. Yeah. He put a piece of wood in it, but I will tell you, for me, I had not come by a guitar that has that much mojo. I think his yeah. spirit's still in the guitar. No, that's cool. It's got heavy though. It's heavy though. It is heavy. There's there's no weight relief on this. No yeah. no nah. chambering. They didn't even try. But, uh, no, not, not even close. But the neck feels good, though, right? No, it's a nice neck. Uh, I have a 71 Black Beauty, and it's very similar essence, but my neck is smaller. Really? It's, um, yeah, I got kind of lucky with mine. It's very uh, thin neck. That, 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 yeah, that should not be like that. What do you think? Uh, I think it's just these are very... Um, Worn out? I mean, yeah, they're old, so I'd say they're very loose because mine are very. And you know what? I think when you go down to five, like you don't hear this, much of this actually. See, these ones are very. This one's wobbly. Uh, this one is like harder to do. But anyway, yeah, it's really nice. So, what does the rest of 2024 hold for Taj? Um, touring and uh, just probably buying some more guitars. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Is it. All right, so how would Taj define Shred? Well, there's different kinds, but I, I define it as like perfect. Like you have to kind of just be Gary Moore pretty much and then that's what I think Shred is. Just the way he played I felt was perfect. Had that melody. Yeah, like right? melody. It was melodic but he, it was quick as well. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. Well-roundedness, right? Well-roundedness, I feel. you can. Everyone can go fast but not everyone can play slow. Right, that's very true. And it, people think it would be easier to play slow. Yeah, nah. it depends. It, but a lot of it, it if you're trying, you know what's really hard? Trying to show something, something, you can play it fast, and then you're like, so this is how you do it. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's harder to play, right? Yeah. Exactly true. Is there any player or artist that you would actually like to have the chance to perform with in your career as you go forward? Uh, there's this guy, his name's Eric Steckles, and... um. He's probably my favorite guitarist at the moment. Eric Steckles, I, I know Eric very well. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Yeah, I played with kids for a while. They were um, they were really cool. And, and and what was that situation like? Were you on stage with them? Were you, uh, were you... really? I they wanted. They, I was gonna go to a show, but then uh, COVID hit, and we had to go back home, or we were gonna be stuck in Australia, uh, stuck in America for like three years because of the lockdown. Yeah, and um, yeah, we had to go home. I was actually playing with Santana at that point as well. So I did the rehearsal with Kiss and then we had to leave. Wow. Yeah. Were they going to give you like a special outfit like they have with the boots? <laughs> I, I kind of, I'm not sure. I kind of hope if I did that, I kind of hope I just got to wear what I normally wore. Because if I had to wear that stuff, I'd probably fall over. Well, so you, if you had to put the paint on, was there any character you'd like to be? I don't even know. <laughs> You never know. They may have gone that far. So here you, you go. Never know. Be Here's like, Here's the makeup the paint. kit. I'm like, what? <laughs> exactly. That'd be pretty crazy. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. You're, you know, a road dog. You're going at it, man. You guys are got a great production. Your own management company. You know, this yeah. is all. This is a family affair, right? So, I mean, it's gonna be sky's the limit for you. So we definitely appreciate it. Um, where can everybody follow you at, Taj? Um, you can just follow me with my name. It's just Taj Farron, and then um. Yeah. And you do live streams on Facebook a lot too, right? I do live streams on most platforms pretty much every day, unless we're busy or it's a show day. But I mean, yeah. All right, so make sure you check out that. Make sure to, to subscribe to the channel Masters of Shred. Shred the notification bell so you can see some new videos we put out. Follow Tosh's YouTube too. If you, you probably already follow him already because you, you have a very strong presence on YouTube as well. So check that out. You can follow us on Instagram at Masters of Shred. And then uh, Mr. Shred Official. And of course, follow Taj on there too. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next Talking Shred episode.